We live in a country where almost 17 million people think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. And we need to do something about that. There's such a disconnect between urban and rural populations, between the farm and the fork, that you know we have to do something in order to bridge that gap. My baby, my baby, just three weeks to go. The rain is falling wildly, but the moon is still aglow. In tomorrow, there'll be sunshine, and the garden will be green. We'll lay a bed of lilies for you to dream. I, I was aware of organizations and groups who many may consider in our industry anti-agriculture and I knew of those um, sentiments but when I got a Facebook page and got involved more involved with social media I followed many news outlets and publications and when a um, agricultural article would be written oh my goodness I was blown away of, of where the public sentiment was now I know maybe a small percentage but sometimes they're the loudest I can pull out my phone and now we have things like uber eats and people aren't even going to the grocery store anymore so you know we've always complained about you know people don't know how their food gets to the grocery store now people are they click a button and food shows up at their door what I see in the My Job Depends on Ag movement is they are creating the message, which is important. What they need is how to get that message out there. Who's the messenger? The future of agriculture in California can sometimes be exciting, but it can also be scary. And so it's so important for organizations like FFA and 4-H to be able to have those ag teachers and those um, industry leaders who are investing in young people to believe in the future of agriculture. At the end of the day, uh, there's nothing more satisfying than putting in a hard day's work out here because you know that your work is, is, is part of something. It's, it's a circle. Knowing in ag that uh, we're a small part of the economy and a lot of people who aren't involved in ag don't have a clue on what we have here in Central California. I wanted to figure out a way to show people what we can do here like no other place. My baby, my baby, just three weeks to go. Your father's preparations for you have found the flow. And your mother, she is resting for a journey to bring you home. And we'll see you when the winds begin to blow. Yeah, we'll see you when the winds begin to blow. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, helping to protect and grow Valley Agribusiness in California for over 40 years. By the Gar and Esther Tatillion Charitable Foundation, a legacy of giving to support the people that make agriculture grow. Farms feed families, public television feeds minds. By Brandt, professional agriculture supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley Agriculture connected since 2003. By Harris Farms, a tradition of working forward to protect the future of water, ranches, and farms in California and beyond. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for a half century dedicated to supporting Valley Agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food. The phrase, my job depends on ag, the first time, you know, kind of was out there was a video, a YouTube video that was, that was uh, made in Fireball, California, where Steve, uh, uh, my partner in this, and the California Farm Water Coalition and Mike Wade, they put on a video trying to showcase, they had all these tractors and equipment, we still use the image today in an alfalfa field, just like this one here, of, of all the jobs it takes just to make a bale of hay, 
working out in Western Fresno County my entire career selling farm equipment. Uh, early on in my career working out here in the northern border of the Westlands Water District, uh, we out here before many other places in California uh, were losing our water to rules and regulations, new laws, endangered species acts, and all the above for 20 years. And that was really hard to swallow when you're watching all this water that the Sierra Nevadas generate go out to the ocean. The, the drought and the current political climate and the frustration with ag between me and Steve was, it was coming to a collision point. There was a lot of news articles about during the drought, the California won. It, it only represents 2% of our, we only are 2% of the California economy. Two, we use 80% of the water. And three, um, we're farming in the desert. It was like a triangulated effort, really messaging, that really was frustrating both Steve and I. I mean, we talked on the phone, and he's, it was just a constant drumbeat. The drought continued, zero allocation in 2014 or very little. The problem was still a problem. And um, I made a decal, and I'm not the first guy to make a decal. And my, my attempt was to use the state of California on the decal. And there was a simple reason for that, is that all of us in ag out here in California, in this big state, um, all have the same passion. We don't know each other because this valley is 300 miles long and there's separate, different uh, areas of the valley that are completely different from the other. They grow completely different crops. Our cl many climates here grow everything. And so consequently, ag's been fragmented. And the fragmentation thing has created some issues up in the state and everywhere else where we've been getting beat. So I thought the decal with the state of California might get us all together as one. Steve called me up while I was working in a cornfield and he says, hey buddy, I got, a, I got this decal that I'm working on and I'm gonna show you a picture of it. He shares a picture with me and it says, my job depends on ag in the state of California. I said, that's awesome, dude. Let's, uh, I want some for my customers, put them on our cars. That was kind of the end of the thing. We were just gonna put them on our vehicles to kind of uh, show people who we are and where we are. The big U word for unity is the ultimate goal Steve Malonka has for us in this ag region. If we can all unite and get on the same page, uh, there's nobody that can stop us. And for what we do here in California, it's gonna take that to get people running the state to realize what we have here and the value of our climate and our safe food supply for the whole country. I think that in California, the regulations that we have, not only on water, but um, as far as animal rights activists go, things like pesticides and crop use, um, things like that, in comparison to other states, it's, it can be intense, but it's all for a good reason. Sometimes it can be hard to work through, especially for agriculturists and farmers, um, and that can be a challenge, but there has to be a way to work through it as well. So I told Steve, maybe it was a couple days, three or four days later, I called him up and go, hey man, this is the perfect, the name, the symbol is perfect for social media. And the idea was to start a social media page to um, rebuff the myth that we we're hearing about water. That was the, the genesis of the idea. That's what the, that's what the foundation, and our goal was to, you know, not to, not to raise money to, um, lobby Sacramento, we wanted to go directly to the people, the voters, the people who live in the urban areas. That was important to us. And uh, to try to get them to reassess and examine their daily interactions with agriculture. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So let your light shine without holding it in. Love yourself and don't give in. When you feel the harmony, smile with the sons of the galaxy. I think at the time there was maybe around 15,000 members, um, and 
I was new coming back into agriculture. The year before, um, my dad died very suddenly and I got cast into the role of running the family farm. And it's one of those things uh, that I knew a lot about what was going on just because I grew up around it. Um, but I'd been away for quite a while and I didn't realize how much of a, the, the sentiment was out there that people didn't understand agriculture and, and what we do. And it, it, to me, I just looked at it and I thought, wow, what a great way to be able to get this message out to, to people that need to understand it. The great thing with my job depends on ag, when it got started, uh, for me as a legislature was, it was somewhere that I could look at and see what's going on uh, from the ground level. Because uh, a lot of what we get is from the lobbyist side. And you know, unless we're doing the town halls and the meetings and people are coming to us, it's really hard to know what is actually happening and what's being seen. So I was kind of excited when it got started up because it was somewhere where I could follow, I could bounce ideas, I could post things on the Facebook and get immediate responses to things going on. Now, as it's evolved, it's nice because it gives us the power in Sacramento to say, well, here's what the grassroots is saying. And it gives, I think, legislatures a little bit mobility to kind of push back against some of the other things that we're hearing. Because when you look at Sacramento, I mean, there's multiple uh, ag houses. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on. I mean, we're a state of 403 commodities. And to really hear from the families that are doing this themselves and have that direct communication with them is remarkable. And it lets us really know where the heartbeat of agriculture is. So this is a typical harvest of, of citrus. Um, you've, got, you've got workers on ladders that climb up the tree with a bag and you'll see them emptying it in the bin. Morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. So if you look here, this is, this is the effects of one of, of one of the insects that we fight quite a bit. It's called California red scale. Um, and this, this piece of fruit will be graded out as it goes through the system um, because, because of that. Uh, it's a real difficult bug to get under control if it gets out of control. It, it's bad for the fruit, it's bad for the trees. Um, and this is kind of what I'm looking for when I come out here, this kind of thing. So I can, and so I can gauge, I can get a better gauge with all of this fruit together rather than looking at individual trees and so I can gauge where we are with respect to controlling this particular pest. When people ask about My Job Depends on Ag and, and what it means, um, it, there's, there's preconceived notions out there. There's a lot of people that think that we're some kind of uh, political action group, which we're not. Unfortunately, in agriculture, you can't, it's very hard to separate politics from the boots on the ground ag because it, it, what, what happens in Sacramento or Washington DC or anywhere across the country in legislatures, it affects what we do every day. Obviously there's a vacuum out there. There's a, there's a, there's a yearning for people to want to be more connected back to the farm. They want to know what we do. They want to know why we do it. And there's been, you know, people in agriculture have a tendency to be private and you know, and so that adds to it. And for me, I looked at my job depends on ag as a, just a huge opportunity to be able to help bridge that gap. And I think ultimately that's fundamentally what the goal is. There's 330 million people in America and hopefully we all get to eat three times a day. Agriculture and sometimes I think our society has been so affluent that people really don't think if they make these changes or regulations will affect what's in the grocery store. And we're here today to say it can and it will. Initially, I went into Fresno and ordered 200 decals and sold those in three days. And right at the same time, Eric blew this Facebook page up and we got inundated with people wanting decals. The 200 were sold in three days. The next order was 1,000. Those 1,000 were sold in two weeks. At $5 a piece, I had $5,000 in my pocket. And I called Eric and I said, Eric, it's not my money. 
I'm not doing this to get in the decal business. Let's give it away to kids. We're out here in Western Fresno County in these small ag towns, and we immediately called Fireball, Dos Palace, Mendota, Chowchilla, right in our backyard and called the ag teachers and said, hey, we have an opportunity here to help the kids, and we don't want this money for us. The next best place for it, we'll give it to kids for scholarships going into ag. And that's how it began. the stars in me I feel so alive I first found out about my job depends on ag when I first started driving um, as a silage driver for Bob Machado at Amantica and basically he was talking about the group and um, I decided to look into it and I requested to join and I started posting posts of um, hauling corn as a silage driver, and I thought it was really cool that I was putting posts up of uh, unique um, hay fields and routes to the pits where I would dump, dump my load. Well, I fly an agricultural helicopter and we spray uh, conventional crops and organic crops. A lot of people are surprised by that, but bugs eat organic just as much as they eat anything else. So we have to control that. And uh, today we were spraying sweet corn. We're spraying for the army worm. And um, yesterday I was spraying some tomatoes, and um, we do a lot of, there's a lot of crops up here in the Delta. My boss, Bob Machado, uh, he gave me a position driving a silage truck for six weeks, so I hauled this last uh, O'Day season. And then he referred me to um, a company, which I now work for, and um, they immediately needed me to spread um, into the oat fields. And, uh, I had some really old boots that I was trying to make stretch as long as I could until my next paycheck. However, the um, uh, fertilizer ate up the stitches that I had in my boots. Um, and then especially whomping on the gas, putting the hammer down, getting through the field, um, the strain, um, the boots just didn't hold up. So um, being that I needed to be at work the next morning and I was going to be in these muddy orchards after spreading, I put an ad on for help if I could buy or have someone's used uh, boots and, and to, to get by. Initially, immediately, there was um, a negative response from someone and so I literally was just about to take the post down because I was so embarrassed. And then right as I was about to take the post down, floods of um, likes, and then Andy said, don't worry about it, I'll take you boot barn right now. And I, I, I really didn't believe it. All right, well, Jaime, uh, I come across his post. This young man lived not too far from me, lives in Patterson, and he was asking for a used pair of boots. Wasn't asking for money, wasn't asking for a new pair of boots. I had two used pair of boots at home that would fit him. And I saw that post and I just I just felt like, you know, this guy's genuine. He just wants a used pair of boots so he can work every day. And I says, you know, I'm gonna buy him a new pair of boots because whenever I buy myself a pair of boots, I feel like I'm on top of the world, especially if I can get boots, new pair of jeans, and a nice shirt. Oh lordy, it's just like it's just like you've you've been lifted up. <laughs> So I just kind of kept on working and literally I checked my phone about half an hour later on my lunch break and there was like a flood of um, re people reaching out to me and especially Andy saying, where am I? How come I'm not getting back to him? And so um, I, I reached out to him. Andy uh, said, what's your size? And then he, he says, I'm at the boot barn right now. I said, really? And he literally texted me holding up these boots. What size are you? I said. Well, I'm size 10, and um, that was Friday evening. Saturday after work, on the way home back to Patterson from spreading all day, 
Andy says, I'm drying cherries um, at your boss's dairy. Come on, come on by. And so I drove by, and I parked, and I waited for him, and I could hear him. And then that was when I posted that one video. Here he comes. I can hear him, everyone. And it was so exciting to me. This is amazing. Holy wow! Holy smokes! Really helping me out here, you guys. Thank you for all the nice comments, and God bless everyone. Have a happy Memorial Day. Look at him coming out, look at him! Yeah! And it was really special, and he came out like Santa Claus to me. It looked like Captain America mixed with Santa Claus. He came out with these two huge bags, three bags from Boot Barn, and on top of that, he came with two pounds of cherries and a pound of fresh blueberries just picked that morning. He just gave me great pride that I can provide that for Jaime, and I could tell when I gave it to him that he was so appreciative. And I saw him the next day. I, I drove out to where he was working. I wanted to say hi, shake his hand, and he wasn't wearing the pants. And I says, hey, where's the pants? He says, well, he says, those pants are nice. He says, I'm gonna wear these out first. And then I'll wear those other ones. He says, I, I want to wear out my old clothes first because that stuff you got me is nice and I really appreciate it. So, you know, that's how it all went down and now we've become friends and um, he's happy to be here. He's appreciative and he's, he's, he's uplifting. I, he's working right now. You know, he, he's not taking time out of his day to accommodate us really. I mean, maybe a little bit, but he knows he's got a job to do and he wants to keep his employer happy. I really got emotional, to be honest with you. I did. And so I tried not to cry in front of the videos, but, but I'll be honest with you, uh, sometimes I'm a little bit of a crier when it comes to times like this, because th these times like this in my life are far and in between. And so um, I really wanted to embrace the, the moment and really be thankful and to reach out to everyone, because the My Job Depends on Ag community has reached out to me in a way that I, I haven't really been reached out to before. And so, um, it's really heartwarming, actually. Um, my family really appreciates it. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. For some reason, um, people gravitated toward what we were doing because they don't know if they felt like they were being heard. This would be a generational thing. We have to continue this march for 15, 15, 20, 25 years. Yeah, your heart is a sun. And it shines as it opens. Where well, your heart is a sun, and it shines as it opens. Yeah, your heart. The alternative to a vibrant ag community or an uh, industry is really importing food. I interact with people from environmental groups quite often, some of the committees and, and boards and things that, that I'm involved with. I, I make an effort to talk to them because I, I look at it and say, you know, we are regulated, which overall can be a good thing, but we get to a point where we get overregulated due to these environmental concerns and we can't survive. And all we're doing is we're taking that responsibility that that person feels to the planet or to their, to their home, their backyard, and we're just giving it to someone else in a place that isn't nearly as regulated as what we do here. And so that responsibility that they feel is now shifted and now they can't see it and therefore it makes them feel better. And it's, it's been really important for me to try and bridge that gap with those people and say, you really, if you feel this responsibility, we should try and work together and make this work for all of us so we can still have a homegrown food supply that works for everyone. You know, kind of the sad part about Sacramento and the way our state legislature works is it's emotionally based. And my job depend on ag has the ability to add the emotional side to what farming really is, to tell the stories of these families that, you know, have been here generations. And without a median like My Job Depends on Ag, you don't have that. Because the Sacramento politicians see the trade associations as, oh, that's just another lobbyist. They're just trying to sell me on something. But when you see the family members in the grassroots people from My Job Depend on Ag show up, it's a real person. It's not somebody from a trade association. It's not one of the paid lobbyists. It's somebody who took the time to make the drive up to Sacramento to leave the farm and say, hey, here's what's really going on. And that's powerful. 
Eric, right after that Facebook page started, he may have mentioned that we had 10,000 followers in a week and a half, and he was very emotional, realizing how many people were attacking this page, and I love his comment. He said to me, Steve, I think we woke up a sleeping giant. Say, why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, helping to protect and grow Valley Agribusiness in California for over 40 years. By the Gar and Esther Tatillion Charitable Foundation, a legacy of giving to support the people that make agriculture grow. Farms feed families, public television feeds minds. By Brent, professional agriculture supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley agriculture connected since 2003. By Harris Farms, a tradition of working forward to protect the future of water, ranches, and farms in California and beyond. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for a half century dedicated to supporting Valley Agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food.